Here's how you go. Here we go. We're live. Well, might as well say welcome to the NTS of round two. Oh, round one, sorry. Or split two. Yep, so uh, evening viewers, so tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm JP here, and we're uh, replaying split two of the uh, NTS V8 Evolution uh, Championship. This is round one at uh, Road America. Uh, normally we don't have any uh, uh, commentary with these uh, replay streams because uh, it's very hard to have commentary. But what we've got is we've got a few uh, of the guys who raced last night. Um, just to sort of talk us through their uh, their race, uh, give us their perspective on how it was for them, their highlights, their lowlights, I guess, and uh, and what their thoughts were. How are you going, guys? Yeah, good, mate. Thanks, PP. So I think I'll uh, I'll introduce a few of the uh, a few of the drivers, and here we go. The race is uh, the race is uh, timing up here, so people can actually see what's going on. This is the bit I'm looking forward to. A bit of carnage here at the start of the race. Yeah, back to starting from uh, 14th, he definitely got caught out by that uh, that start there. There was a bit of traffic bunched up, but to everyone's credit, they, they kind of just you know, jumped on the brakes and uh, it didn't get in each other's way, so it was, it was quite, quite a good start from everyone. It was, was it yeah. It was. I don't know how I got through, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, looks like uh, looks like everyone had a pretty pretty decent start. There. Nice to see uh, nice to see Tom there in second place at the stage. Uh, Tom, one of our new drivers uh, uh, in the uh, New Year Auto Camerana uh, ZP Home Commodore. Absolutely loved that paint job. That car was painted for us by uh, by Juan from Eye Liveries, and he did a. Uh, so um. I guess uh, let's go through the uh, the guys that we have in here. We'll uh, I'll get you guys to introduce yourselves, tell you tell us a little bit about your team, what car you're driving. So Craig, if you want to uh, kick kick off for us, thanks, mate. Yeah, not a problem, mate. Yeah, Craig Hopkins here, mate. We're um, Fridgy Chill Racing, and I'm uh, Car 71. We've got three three boys in the team, Dave and Max. Dave was in split one last night. He did really well. There I am there. Richard Chill Racing, look at that, here I go. And I was still clean. It was a good race, really enjoyed it. Yeah, nice looking livery on that car too. Yeah, my mate Dave put that, we put that together last week. Come up really well, we're really, really wrapped with it. Good. Yeah, absolutely awesome. At least, uh, at least the banners that I put on there uh, set it off as well. Absolutely, JP, mate, you made a perfect spot. <laughs> good. Hey, Darren, Darren, <laughs> Darren Robb's joined us for the... Uh, the uh, broadcast tonight. G'day Darren, thanks for joining us mate. Um, Adam, what about yourself mate? Let's uh, introduce, uh, introduce Adam here. Yeah, thanks JP. Um, yeah, Adam Neal. Um, we're racing for Pace Syndicate. Um, I'm a one-man band uh, for the team this year. Uh, J, uh, J, uh, James Ruwell uh, took out uh, Season 1 as the champion, so i uh, got some pretty high expectations to live up to uh, in the team, but uh, obviously wasn't able to string it together to get into the uh, top split last night, so I had to settle for P4, starting in P14 in, in split 2, so it um, turned out to be a pretty good race in the end. It was um, just a matter of staying clean and you know, staying off the grass and, and just you know, biding your time. So Adam, at this stage here, you know, with uh, with two lap two laps of 28 down, what were you sort of thinking about starting? In, uh, where are you at this stage? You're in P12. Yeah, it was. I mean, I had Clay Lewis in front of me, and he, he's you know I've raced against him a couple of seasons ago, and, and you know he's he's super fast. But um, you know I was just hoping that you know he might make a mistake somewhere, and um, yeah, just kind of just watching everyone. You kind of see lockups here and there, and I'm just going, oh, you know, is, is someone going to run wide, and we're going to get a chance just to try and get up to the top ten. And I think in a few corners' time, a couple of people actually do run a bit wide. So yeah, for me at this point, it was just a matter of you know trying to stay clean, um, you know. Trying not to lock up there goes someone into the walls. So yeah, obviously it was just a matter of staying clean for the first few laps while the tyres are cold. Let them come up to come up to speed, and uh, and yeah, just settle into the pack. It's a long race. Um, got to do a couple of pit stops. So yeah, just keep it clean. Yeah. So you uh, you had pretty much set yourself uh, set yourself up for a couple of pit stops. You weren't going to try and save or anything like that. 
No, my, my intention was just um, run for as long as I can and, um, you know, go in, fuel up. And then uh, I actually, from what everyone's been saying today, um, you know, the, the two pit stops, it was going to require two pit stops. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, from my perspective, I was just planning on just running as long as I can and then pitting when I needed to. Yeah, fantastic. Well, it obviously worked out for you. And I guess uh, that's a spoiler alert for those who are watching us, but uh, anyone can get on the later. Um, we've got a uh, special guest from Split One, Blake Kirk, is uh, has joined us. Blake, how are you tonight, mate? Yeah, good, JP. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad at all, mate. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your team. I know you've got, uh, there's, uh, I think, one or two of your guys that might be racing in this, so we'll, uh, we'll go and jump on uh, on board with the play, and you can tell us a little bit about it if we are. Yeah, so we... We only just a brand new team, so we're only, I don't know, about six, seven months into it. <clears throat> um, we've got Clay, as you can see on screen at the moment, he's been um, in NTS for the last three seasons. He's been quite picking um, up the pace for the FTR um, as he's in for split one for next week. So um, other than that, um, we've got two boys in here. So we've got Aaron and um, Clay. But um, yeah, other than that, we've got uh, two really good drivers who drives for FTR. So... Um, but other than that, um, it's good to be um, spotting for um, NTS and um, hoping to watch more of it as I haven't watched um, NTS Split 2 yet, so it'd be good to watch. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, Clay's, uh, Clay, Clay's really come on. He's really excitable. Young fella, he messaged me, uh, I think he messaged me a, a few days ago, really happy with himself. Now I've got all the content for, uh, for the series, I'm really happy, so... Yeah, no, great to see him doing well. Really good to see him finish uh, finish on the podium last night and, uh, and earn himself a, uh, a wild card in the split one next week. Yeah, no, that's um, he was actually texting the grip today and saying he was in the split um, one next week. So we all congratulate him on um, for split one next week. He drove really well last night, so um, grudge to him. Buried down the pack a little bit there. Yeah. You have made four, sp four spots at this stage. Yes, you know, that was good actually. I had a really I had a really good race. I really enjoyed it. The um, obviously uh, nervous as hell first race of the uh, new season of NTS. So and also getting used to the, all the new regulations and not talking on the comms etc. And that, like, which is really good. I really enjoyed that. It's, it keeps it professional. And um, yeah, just keeping it clean. It's actually quite surprising. A few laps later, I, I do actually I hit the grass. And it's amazing how much it takes to get yourself back in that line again after you do mess up a bit. Yeah, you've always got that, that in the back of your mind, especially at the same corner, and you tend to be a little bit hesitant for a few, for a few laps. You know, it's, it's trying to be able to get that out of your mind, to get back, on the, back onto the job at hand at, at, at sort of racing and, and getting those laps under your belt. That's right. When you when you get a couple of laps under your belt and you, you really start to settle in, you get your lines back again. I mean, I, I really enjoyed chasing um, this fellow in front of me. I can't remember his name, but it was really good. We had a good race. And then we chop and change here and there, and it was good. Yeah, that would have been Matt, Matt Dumphy. And, uh, yes. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really pleased with the, with the level of racecraft that we've seen, even at the, you know, at the beginning of the, the first, very first round. And you, I've got to admit, you know, you guys had 40 cars in your split last night, and um, that's a lot of cars to be able to, uh, to to sort of drive in and amongst. So, and there would have been uh, something going on around you at all the time, almost. Oh yeah, especially at the start too. There was a few cars just sort of spinning away left and right beside you, and then uh, you, know, you, had, you had a corner with two of you, you know, two abreast, keeping it clean, getting around the corners so you don't upset each other. Because you know, obviously, the last thing you want to do is knock someone else out of the track and you don't want to ruin someone else's race or your own. So, yeah, it's just yeah, keeping your head down and keeping the fan on to keep the, uh, the perspiration down and, <laughs> and get through the race. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I my God. I had a little portable air conditioner on last night too uh, that I, I have next to the sim because, uh, yeah, towards the end of the race, it, it, it got a bit sweaty. So, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I, I have to agree. I mean, you know, the, the 
the the quality of the driving, especially you know as, as the race went on, and you know a few cars started to you know come out of the pits a lap down. You know that they were very quick and clean to get out of the uh, out of the way. You know that they did the right thing by everyone. So you know it, it's definitely a credit to to the drivers. You know in, in both splits. Um, that you know that they've read the rules that they're making sure that they're being respectful you know that they definitely don't want to ruin anyone else's race so uh, yeah definitely yeah. A, a testament to the quality of the drivers in the field yeah, it makes a big difference it definitely makes a big difference because you know you're racing with people that sort of don't really they just worry about themselves they don't worry He's about other people there, <laughs> yeah now uh, just notice we've, we've had the Barella brothers uh, join us Ash and Richard Hey boys! I think Ash is having a few uh, few technical issues there. Richard, are you there, mate? I am. Yes. How are you, buddy? Good. But uh, just uh, we've just been going through introducing the guys, telling uh, the guys have been telling people about their their teams. Um, I'll get you to sort of introduce yourself and, and tell us a little about a little bit about the team. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm actually Ash's dad. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I've only uh, just got into the sim racing in the last month, so it's all new to me. Um, and so, lucky enough, the boys from uh, Wodonga Carts and Parts, um, you know, invited us, which is obviously local guys from where we are down here, to, um, yeah, jump on and have a drive with them. Fantastic. So how long have you been sim racing for? Uh... Oh, probably four weeks. Oh, that's oh, gold. That's fantastic. That's gold. And how are you finding it? Um, yes. It's, um, yeah, taking quite a bit to, to get the handle of it, but it's, um, yeah, quite enjoyable. Really, really enjoy it. Yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like the next best thing for all us, uh, us wannabe boy racers. And yeah, out of all the cars that you could have started with, you, you decided to start with the uh, the V8 supercar, probably one of the hardest cars to uh, to drive. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sort of... Um, my workshop was right next door to Brad Jones Racing for about 10 years, and I did a little bit with those guys and the pit crew and that sort of thing, so I've always um, been a keen V8 supporter, and yeah, so... When you're close, Silver, it's good to actually get into something and drive one and feel what it's sort of, you know, virtually like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it took me almost 12 months before I was able to keep one of these things on the road. But then again, it was the old, uh, the old VF Commodore, and they were uh, an absolute handful. Those cars, incredibly rewarding to drive when you got it right, but uh, they would bite, and when they bit, they bit incredibly hard. But uh, no. Um, and how did you find the racing last night? To be honest, I was nervous as hell. <laughs> um, yeah, no, look, it was, uh, yeah, a really good experience, even though I think I got a 30-second um, penalty <laughs> given to me today, apparently, for yeah, not keeping up to the pace car pace, but obviously these things are all a learning thing, and, you know, while everything's new, and hopefully we can all improve and just get better and the racing get better, but, you know, um, I think the way it was all conducted, you know, did make it feel like a, a proper race and that it counted, you know, you didn't want to make a mistake and trow your car because you would have been off and done. So, yeah, it was quite good. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that we tried to, uh, to bring into this series. We try to sort of, we try to instill that sort of thought of, of, of real consequences when you're, when you're actually racing. I mean, the beauty of sim racing is you can uh, you can put your car in the wall, hit the reset button, and uh, and jump back to the pits and then start again. But uh, we try to sort of give you guys that sense uh, of, of more of a real world kind of race, and I, and I think it kind of works in this in this series. Yeah, definitely. I think so. You don't want to hit the wall. No, well, you don't want to hit the wall in this series because if no. you do hit the wall and have to call the tow truck, then uh, it's over and out for you. How you doing, Ash? Are you there, mate? Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm here. Hey, fantastic. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. So, uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. I, I spoke to your brother, but uh, he was your dad, actually. So, um, tell us a little bit 
a little bit about yourself, how long you've been sim racing for and, and, and so forth. Yeah, so I've done it a little bit longer than the old man. I've been sim probably in May, I think. So, um, yeah, and obviously same thing with the old man. It's just more so being where we are and knowing the Joneses and wanting to drive the V8s. And as soon as you get the license to do it, you, you jump in them and, and try and do it. So, yeah, basically pretty well similar. And um, John Van Ree, the guy who's sort of putting it all together, he... Um, we we're just in a local one of the series races and we worked out I was from here and invited me along and yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, that's fantastic. And actually, big shout out to John Van Ree. He's actually helped me uh, this week and helped me in the past weeks to uh, to get our point scoring system up and running. So uh, yeah, big shout out, big thanks to John for that. Oh, there's a car going off in the background. Oh, that's there. me. <laughs> oh, you go. You're lucky I can't I can't actually go through to the uh, the replay so you went away I'm with glad. that one. You got away with that one. <laughs> this is one of my favourite shots. Look at the eyes on this thing. This is probably oh, the scariest car on track I reckon. Special scratched up like that, she looks mean. Yeah, you scratched up like that. He's gonna have to <laughs> he's gonna have to pay me buy me a virtual carton of beer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that is that is awesome. That's another car that was painted by Juan from iLiveries, and uh, yeah, he just does the most amazing paint that you've ever seen. Yeah, There's another. Yeah, uh, after, um, sorry, now it's just after getting the paints ready for this season. No matter how we put into it, we're definitely thinking about getting something else to do it next time. Yeah, look, I mean. Paints are definitely an, an expression of yourself and of your team and, and, and things of that nature. And you can, and the, one of the one of the great things about eye racing, of course, is you can come up with these fantastic liveries on your cars, and you can show everybody, um, you know, what your cars are looking looking like. Uh, we've got yeah. a few people watching us now. Shane, good day. How are you, mate? Darren's with us again. Darren, uh, Blake's on. Blake's on there talking to Shane. Yep, eye racing. So. Yeah, fantastic. At the moment, you guys are looking uh, looking fairly golden there. Um, not too much. I think by this time we'd had at least one, if not two, safety cars in split one. But uh, yeah, the guys the guys were definitely not taking the Yes, but we actually had three safety cars in split one. So yeah, well we had yet yeah, we had one towards the end there as well. And looks like here we're uh, we're on board with Mitch Campbell and he's checked out. He's uh, he's really uh, really come a long way um, with 9595 9 Sim Sport driving the ZB Commodore where he should be. He was, um, but I think by this stage, I mean he he checked out. I mean he was well and truly, you know, eight eight seconds or so out in front. Um, you know, even even the guys in in second and third were were struggling to keep up. So he, he definitely for that first stint had the uh, had the car down. He was man and machine. Yeah, he sort of, he, he certainly had the uh, had the thing wired. Uh, not sure what happened to him, but I guess we'll find out. Anybody want to shed shed some light? Spoiler. I, to be honest, I actually don't know. I, I, I guess we'll have to wait and find out together. Because yeah, I'm uh, I'm not sure. I think at, at this point, I think this is uh, Dean tucked in behind me. Dean and I had a, a pretty decent battle uh, for for a few laps there I think he got in front of me at uh, at one point and then uh, and then made a mistake and ended up out on the uh, out on the dirt and I managed to get the position back but uh, yeah he was he was quick in that car for that first in I, I really struggled on the first set of for before the, the pit stop I, I just don't know if it was a cold track or no rubber down but yeah just I couldn't quite hit my braking markers and was sitting I think you know probably about a second or two seconds off the pace and, and um yeah, just just really struggled to, to really find where the car was at. But uh, yeah, after the, the first pit stop, it definitely came uh, much more alive and was uh, uh, a bit easier to, to handle. I think it might have been a little bit of extra rubber on the track. Yeah, look, you'll find that it's a little bit it's a little bit different with iRacing, racing the way that they uh, they do their whole rubber thing. Um, I always set these tracks to have 100% rubber, so to be fully rubbered up. And when you do that in iRacing, racing. The track actually gets greasier, not um, doesn't actually get grippier. 
Um, and that's, uh, that's a throwback to the NASCAR racing where the more rubber the NASCAR's put on the ovals, um, the greasier the track gets. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just, it was just something that, um, you know, this, this first didn't really struggle to find the, the right braking point and, you know, it's kind of missing that corner there and, you know, the one before kind of cut it and it made you, slides you out a bit. I've always struggled through this corner, no matter what car I'm in, whether if I'm racing this track as a, in a GT3 or the V8, it, it's, this corner is a very hard one to get right lap on, lap after lap after lap. Yeah, the carousel, that is a really tough corner. Probably, I would have to say that corner and this one right here are the two hardest corners on the, uh, on the track because you always sort of, you're always sort of clenched going into the, that corner. Have I turned early enough? Am I going to make the apex? I'm not going to go out too wide and hit the grass. Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely tough corners. But the fast corners too, you're really, you're really bringing it through there. You're trying to, yeah, I had trouble. Well, that's that's the thing. You, you know, that's where you're gonna you're going to find that extra time is by being able to, to nail that apex and get the drive out of that fast corner there and and, and pick off the, the guy in front of you. You got a good run out of that one. I think it was the one thing in practice. It's, uh, it's a good thing that we don't have to foot the repair bills for uh, for the real life version of these cars because I, I think in practice it was a few times where I uh, clipped the grass on the outside there and uh, it uh, spun me uh, pretty hard into the wall. So if it was a if it was real life, um, I'd, I'd probably be dead um, <laughs> or uh, have a pretty hefty uh, repair bill. Yeah, uh, that grass does, there's no forgiveness in it. You put that back wheel on her. Huh? She's gone. You're gone. It's like an ice skating rink. And there's no point saving it. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I there mean... you go. I, um, I was actually lucky we with the two safety cars. We didn't have that second safety car. I don't think I would have made it to the end of the track race, to be honest. With the fuel. Yeah. It was like, and that second safety car saved me with the fuel. I only did one pit stop, and it was like, yeah, it was borderline. Yeah. So yeah, really taking that into account too, like working that out at the start of the race. Okay, what lap should we go in? But yeah, it's... you could get through this race on one stop, but yeah. the the problem the problem was is you had to be around the the um, low low to mid 111s, 112s, and really had to feel safe from the very start of the race to do it. Yeah, with my heavy foot, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> mine, mine either. Uh, hey, Rick, thanks for joining us, mate. We've got uh, we've got a few people watching watching us tonight. It must be uh, must be paying off this uh, this nattering while uh, while the, the racing's going on, guys. Viewers, the better. Oh, absolutely, that's the way. Uh, absolutely, um, you know, really want to uh, really want to get this series out there as we're watching uh, Craig Casper there. Uh, trying to put a move on, uh, who's, who's on there? On I think Tony. it's Dean, I think. No, Tony Clark. Yeah, yeah, Tony is a, uh, Tony is a, an incredible hard guy to get past, but looks like Craig's about to make a move stick. Oh, oh. 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 Nah, I could be, oh, no, nah, he's going to slot in behind him. Yeah, Tony doesn't give it up that easily. Yeah, I think he finished fourth in his race last night, so he did pretty uh, great in his um, split as well, so. This is a tricky little part here, when you come up beside the other guy, you're getting a little bit of drag and you get pulled, you know, you get up beside him and trying to get on that inside line. Yeah. And try to both get around the same corner. Now, last night I had a couple of those moments, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> hold it. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's some, a, intense, it's some intense moments, you really like, pucker up a bit and like, Whoa. Absolutely, it it's, a, it's a tricky. It's actually a tricky part of the course because, w although the the track itself looks like it's going straight, there's a slight kink in that uh, in that section of, of track. So you'll be you'll be going straight, and um, you'll be moving either to the left or the right of the track depending on where you are. And to, to have two cars to try and go through there, it, it's always a risky move because I think you know you, you've got to be really. If you're on the outside there, you've really got to just just concede the position because if, if you try and go too wide through there, you know you're going to run wide. And depending on when you put your foot back down on the accelerator, it's most likely going to spin you around or, or 
you know, spit you back onto the track. So you're better off just, you know, braking early, concede the position, and get the better run out to, to you know, try and have a go into turn two. Yeah. yeah Keep it clean. Absolutely. It's one of those, it's one of those turns where you've got to have cooperation by the guy that you're passing and, and he's got to realise that he's been beaten and, and be, be happy to sort of let off a little bit. It's probably the one thing that, that I've learnt, the, the more, the longer that I've been racing is, is more about, you know, when you are involved in an incident, it's, it's looking back and going, you know, what could I have done different, even if it's not your fault. Um, it, it's, you know, a few things, of, uh, friends of mine who, who race in, in real life have, have given me that advice saying you know always look you know what could you have done differently um to avoid that and and sometimes it's a matter of just saying yeah i'll, I'll break early I'll, I'll remove myself from from that battle because at the end of the day i think at this stage we're, we're probably on lap 12 to 14 i can't see uh, what lap we're on here but um you know there's still half a race to go so the fact that you're going to give up one position may not necessarily mean that you know your race is over and done yeah, 100%. And uh, yeah. we're actually watching Scott Weston here from uh, Redback Racing. He's made up 23 positions uh, from the start of the race, so he's absolutely uh, flying. Yeah, in a, I think in a couple more laps, he, he ended up uh, right on my tail for, for a few laps. He was um, he was putting the pressure on and uh, getting my sweats up uh, yeah, pretty intensely. So, you know, he was driving the car really, really well. Yeah, great great to see that that kind of uh, intensity and that kind of commitment i mean these are these are guys who don't have massive experience in the v8s um you know hence we call this a development series but um you know we're not just developing developing their pace we're throwing challenges at them all the time uh, with the way that they conduct their pit stops with the way that they have to conduct themselves behind safety cars and things like that so it's great to see, and it's great to see the level of racing even throughout, um, you know, throughout the splits. I mean, it's a shame that we've got to have split one and split two, uh, but you know, we had 86, we had 86 people uh, racing last night. So uh, good that's, turnout. Yeah, that was a really good turnout. I wasn't expecting that many, that many cars, to be honest. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I always get a bit nervous when I see one of the, the bow repairs cars in, in my rear mirror. I, um, I, unfortunately, I didn't race uh, I, due to other commitments. I couldn't race in, in Season 2 of NTS, but, but did race in, in Season 1 and had a few incidents with uh, a couple of the bow repair cars in, in a couple of rounds. So even now, I'm, I'm still a bit scarred when I see the, the bow repairs cars coming up behind me. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've learnt to just try and block that out. It just gets just another car. Yeah, those guys definitely mean business, um, you know, and they uh, they don't take any prisoners at all. So, yeah, if you've got one behind you, you want you uh, want to do everything you possibly can within the, uh, the rules, of course, to keep them behind you. And as we see, uh, Liam James, one of the new uh, drivers in the series, with uh, Everyone Motorsport going in for his pit stop. Let's see if he uh, follows the rules and uh, make sure he stays in the fast lane of the pits. <laughs> Yes, well, that was a, uh, a bit of contention today, a little bit of controversy today with, uh, with pit stops, but uh, I've, uh, I've done my part. I've, uh, I've put a little post up, I've put a little video up to show what's expected, um, and I'm sure that uh, everybody will be doing the right thing next week. Indeed. I think it's one of those things that, uh, obviously, with the, the three lanes in the pits, the you know... You when, you, when you're racing the official races, you can just drive through everyone's pit boxes and, and not have a care in the world. But, uh, you know, when, you, when you're racing the real thing, you need to make sure that, you know, you're staying in that fast lane the whole way through. Yeah, and that's just, you know, those are those little one percenters that we do um, that make things a little bit different in this series that we, uh, we don't like to see you guys driving through the pit boxes. Um, we'd rather see you in the fast lane. If you're going to be in the fast lane, be in the fast lane. Um, and, you know, and... and and do your pits do your pits properly and and to me it's sort of I, I feel like i get more enjoyment out of doing something like that and i think that you guys would as well yeah absolutely. Yeah, we just saw in the background obviously a couple of cars doing the the right thing staying in the fast lane until they got to their pit box so uh at least there's a, a couple of people that were doing the right thing last night yep and i must admit it does look good on the broadcast because it does look kind of goofy when you've got one car driving through all the other cars through the pit boxes yeah. Actually, just going back to what you were talking about before, um, the seeing someone in a revision mirror, that's something else that 
it's quite nerve wracking. I agree, especially with that start. You can watch your relative, and you can see them starting to catch you, and knowing that they're catching you, and keeping your nerves on. I know they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> that, that's yeah. That's probably it's, one of the most. It's actually, it's switching off and trying to switch off it. Now that just what eyes ahead. Don't worry about coming behind. Keep ahead. Well, I don't yeah. All it takes is for you to look up in your mirror and miss a braking marker and then all of a sudden you, you're yeah. putting a little bit of extra brake pressure, pressure on and, and you're locking up going past the turner and missing the apex. So it, it is it is hard to, to not pay attention to that mirror. I've, I've certainly fallen foul of it a few times, but uh, I agree. It, it, it is one of those things you have to just focus ahead. Don't worry about what's behind you, but uh, it's a good little trick when you are coming up, when you know that car that's coming up on someone, you know, just give them a little flash of the lights and get uh, in their head and try and force them into a mistake. There we, there we go. go. There we go. You're Pretty in the pits now. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's follow let's you into the pits and see how you uh, how you get on for your pits here. Okay, the test is on. The, the test is on. Pressure. Oh, look at that. He's in, he's in oh, the fast lane. You thought about it. <laughs> you thought about it. <laughs> the dead thing about it. <laughs> no, that, well done, that's right. pretty that's good. Nice. That's, that's text. Let, let's have yeah. a look at your exit now. Oh, okay. This is the acid test. This is actually quite, this is quite tricky, like, trying to work it out. Too, like, leaning back into the track, you don't upset anybody out, but you still want to get off quick. The, the trick is to actually almost sort of do a, a little bit of a U-shaped turn into your pit box. So when you stop, you're kind of pointing the car, the nose of the car, slightly out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that was a that was a pretty good stop, and uh, you can see that you are on the you are in the fast lane there. Just joining the rest of the track now and make, keeping that clean. That's quite nervous. Oh, oh my god, god. look at your relative. You don't want to upset anybody else. This Just. and this track is one of those tracks where you can really it's really easier to get a penalty because of the way the the pit exit is. If you cross that blend line, you will get a penalty from my racing. Yeah, and coming out in cold tyres. Isn't it great you come out in cold tyres? Mm. <laughs> Love it. Best, aren't they? <laughs> hey, I'm sure there's a spin up here somewhere and I lost it, but you know, just move to someone else. <laughs> we, had a, we had a few people, uh, especially in the first season, you know, um, on tracks like Silverstone uh, with the colder tracks, that um, they, they'd come out for their pit stops and, you know, one or two turns later, they just rotate the car and, and be pointing the other way. Yeah, you oh. do, you, the pressure's on. You forget. You, come on, let's go, go. You know, oh, hang on a second. Well, you've gotten to that stage where you just you, you're almost on autopilot. You've got your braking markers set. You yes. know where your shift points are going to be, uh, and you sort of you don't reset for the cold tires, and that's when things can go pear shaped. Yeah, you're in that rhythm, you know, you, you, you know, you, you're braking in that same spot every lap and then you come out on cold tyres and you go to brake in that, that spot you, you've done for the last 10 laps with no fuel and, and you know, hot tyres and, and all of a sudden you've got a heavy car with, with cold tyres and it, it's never going to end well. Yeah, and it's, it's always the same thing, you know, first you say it, then you do it, the car starts to slide on you and it's like your eyes, your eyes become the size of dinner plates. Tim Crowley's in a bit of a battle here with the... Yeah, he's a, he's a meat in a tanked um, SRT sandwich, I think. I think this is the battle for second, third and fourth, if I'm correct. These guys were battling pretty much all race. Absolutely. And right at this stage, Mitch has still got a, a, a six, six odd second lead, so he seems to really be in control in control of the race. Uh, let me go back here. Have you done your stop at the, by this point? Yeah, you've done your pit stop. So all of the all of the lead guys, the whole field have done their pit stops at this stage. So uh, yeah, so pretty uh, pretty good. Oh, this this is pretty brave stuff. Having a look going through the carousel. Who's that number seventy four? That's Chris Barnes in 74. Chris I was about to say, but I didn't want to be wrong because <laughs> I don't have no names up, so. That looks really good battle here, so between the three. 
Yeah, absolutely. And while these guys are battling on, they're just letting Mitch get further and further away from them. He's uh, he's eked out the lead now from six seconds to almost seven seconds on these guys. Our call is their paint. Yeah, it's, it's out. Is good. It's, it's out there. That's it's cool. out there, isn't it? It is. And once again, like I said, this is the thing where you can you can just come up with these fantastic paints. Um, and I really like the uh, Pacific Sprint Racing paints as well. Um, these guys are now uh, sponsored by, uh, I think it's AutoServe. So that's uh, Tim, Tim Crowley's mob. Yeah, there's some really good looking paints out there um, this season. It, it's... it's really good to see the level of effort that you know some of the teams are going to to, to really make their cars stand out and you know, put the time and effort into you know, it goes a long way especially on the broadcast goodbye alex how are you mate we've got some more viewers there so just a shout out uh yeah so yeah and and the guys always put in a great effort with their paints and of course uh, uh he's tim having a look oh, oh yeah it's looking pretty He's, he's going to be have the inside run here. Yeah, and this is a tricky corner for two cars as well. Yeah, yeah, and this is one, and like I said, another one of those corners where you have to cooperate, and this one as well. So, it looks That's like he's battle. made that one stick. That's a great battle. Really great racing there, those, uh, those three cars being able to get through there like that. And all the while that these guys have been carrying on, Mitch has now got an eight-second lead. It's yeah, no. <laughs> He's driving really well, so. So, Mitch, if you're uh, if you're watching the stream, mate, I want to know what happened because you look like you are in control of this race and you've got it all sewn up at this stage. Hey, Ben, how are you, mate? Uh, yeah, we had a bit of an idea of trying to have a, a little bit of a, a chat about uh, what was going on in Split Two last night, so it seems to be working. So. It's a great little section through there, the the, the right, left, and, and right again. It's uh, when you, when you spend some time and take some photos of your cars going through that. It's always one of my favourite spots to take photos of the cars through that little section there, especially when you got a few of the field. Yeah, car the cars do look really good going through there. Feels nice as well, nice and bouncy. going past the slower traffic here. This is another corner you don't want to be too wide as well. It's a bit of a you can have a lot of lock up as well. Yeah, it's one of those cor it's one of those deceptively fast corners where you turn in a lot earlier than where you think you should and you can grab a lot more curb than what you, you think the car can take. Um, and if you get it right you can you can carry quite a bit of speed through there. Yeah. It's just another with that passing of the the back marker there. It's you know, a great, great effort just to get out the way. You know, you can see that the, the leading cars are coming through. Just moved off to the side, lifted off, and and made it nice and clean. Made it easy. So here goes Chris on the inside. Yep, taking that position back. But look like Tim's trying the over under, but he's not going to get there. Uh, Darren, that's the plan is to try to have the have some drivers on every week just to have a bit of a chat about what uh, what transpired in Split Two and and yeah, just sort of keep people entertained I guess um, and I guess while we're talking about split two I may as well also talk about what's going to be happening uh, at the end of the uh, of the series we've uh, just announced today that we will be doing a 1000 kilometer Bathurst race for our uh, our final race of the series um, I know some people don't really like it because it will be on a Sunday um, it's a long it's a lot of racing a long day but uh, I thought it was going to be a fitting end for our first year in the Nationwide Tracking Systems V8 uh, Evolution Series Championship to, to do something a little bit special. So we'll be having a, uh, a retro round and a full thousand kilometre race. I think it's a, a great idea. I think it's going to be one of those events that, um, you know, pairing up a couple of the privateers together will, you know, help help bring the, you know, the group of guys. It's, it's one thing that this series does is kind of, you know, creates a bit of a community of, 
uh, of guys who want to drive this car and all these cars and, and get along. I'm uh, a little bit shattered though. Un unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to, to race the 1000. I, uh, I get married on the 5th of December, so I, I don't think my lovely wife to be <laughs> is going to be too keen for me to spend a, a whole day on the sim the day after our wedding, nor do I think I'll probably be in the right uh, condition to, to spend uh, yeah, eight hours behind a wheel. I was going to say, this is a little bit under, you know, a, a little average. Come on. Come on, yeah, what's going on? Come on. Yeah, I've got to assess some priorities here. That's, you know, I, 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 I think I'd like for my uh, marriage to last more than a day. So, uh, yeah, I might have to give this one a miss and, uh, yeah. and come back next season to do it again. Look, I think that's that's probably a good plan. Um, you know, it's good to see that you've got your priorities in order. There was a, it, don't worry, I did think about it. I was like, can I, could I get away with it? But, uh, yeah, no, I made the decision to, uh, to go, no, I'll, I'll have to skip this one. Ben Anthony just said no dedication. Yeah, sorry guys. It's uh, you know, it's she's the boss. She 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 tells me what to do. So you, you yeah, look, you you've understood how it works. So no one's no one's going to give you a hard time for that. Well, actually, well, the whole reason why I'm into sim racing is is much to her credit. So uh, she actually bought me my first sim a uh, few years ago for my birthday. So uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have this sim. Although. Uh, I've probably spent more hours on it than with her, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it was a, a hard one to say no to. But uh, I think I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, I think you are too. So no, fantastic! Congratulations on uh, on getting married. It's fantastic. Thank you. Still, obviously, just got to wait, wait to see what uh, all the COVID restrictions do. But uh, so far, we're on on track. Being a, a South Australian boy, it's uh, yeah, able to to have some restrictions. So I. I just while we're obviously doing this broadcast, just want to say, you know, thinking of everyone in Victoria, I can imagine it's uh, pretty hard. You know, know a few people who are struggling mentally with, you know, the lockdown. So, you know, hang in there, do do what you can, because yeah, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully the end is near and, and you guys will be back out enjoying sunshine and, and everything soon. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and guys, you know, if you are sort of um, really struggling uh, with the uh, with all of the restrictions and the lockdowns, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, reach out to people that you know, you know, there's always people that you can talk to. Well, that, well that's it, guys, you know, I'm from Victoria as well, you know, um, I've got to go to work every day as well, you know, as usual, but we've got to have permits for that as well, so, you know, the people who live in Victoria and who, who are watching, you know, just ask you guys how we are and how we're all going and all that, you know, it, it does take, you know, an hour to, or 10 minutes out of your day just to say how you going and all that, you know, if you've got any families in Victoria, um, you know, and as Adam and JP said, you know, when the J uh, when the, um, sunshine comes out, it'd be good as gold again. So as that happens, uh, um, love and sim racing and as um, NTS um, forwards on, um, as I'm in lockdown, um, that's what I do on a Tuesday night. So other than that, JP, it's really um, great to be doing this uh, series on a Tuesday night, mate. It's uh, really appreciated. Yeah, well, it keeps us out of mischief for uh, for a couple of hours on a Tuesday night, which is fantastic, um, and it, it just enables it enables us to have a little bit of fun and, and get some uh, get some quality racing under our belts as well. And judging by the uh, cars that have slowed down, it looks like this is uh, safety car is is out at this stage. I better uh, I better click my little safety car caution on so the yellow little yellow flag goes up. And at this stage, yeah, there you go. You've uh, this is around about lap 19, if I remember. Yeah, uh, yeah it's 10 laps to go. Yep. Yeah, so uh, you'll see that I've uh, somehow managed to find myself in P1. So I uh, did a bit of a cheeky and decided to stay out instead of taking the pits. So, you know, as I was coming around the corner, I looked at my fuel and I saw that I said I had about seven or eight laps to go and worth of fuel. I was like, oh, seven or eight laps do a couple of laps under the safety car I reckon I might have enough to get home um, but then I also went for the mentality of safety cars breed safety cars so yeah. uh, I thought you know maybe if I can get a second one here I'll be well and truly home uh, home and host so yeah didn't pit came out in P1 and uh, and yeah worked out relatively well nice um, love the look of the safety car absolutely love that uh, that Corvette C8R uh, what do you guys think of the safety car? To be honest, driving behind it, I was just adm uh, admiring the taillights. It's it, it is a beautiful looking car. Those taillights are, are incredible. 
Yeah, it's amazing how you get some cars that have these features that just stand out on it and on the Corvette. Yeah, definitely the taillights just are, are one of those features that really make it um, stand out. And may, and you know, whenever you see those taillights, you know you're uh, you're looking at a Corvette. Yeah, it's a beautiful car to drive. So. I, I wouldn't know. I've only I've only been able to drive it with the mouse at the moment. I'm uh, I'm waiting on all of my new equipment to uh, to arrive. Uh, hybrid racing simulations is uh, is hooking me up again with uh, with all my uh, new gear, brake pedals, uh, Simicube two, and steering wheel. Brett from Hybrid makes some fantastic gear, so can't wait to uh, to get that on the uh, on the sim and uh, get back to some sim racing. Wow, yeah. that'll be some nice gear. That's for sure. Yeah, he makes some quality gear. I, I, I got my gear from him uh, three years ago, and uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't go anywhere else. So I just have to chuck a little bit extra, a little bit of a different twist to this. We were listening, watching the race, and I heard this horrible, deathly scream behind me. But I did take my girls to the wall, but there's a huntsman <laughs> running around too at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw they were both on the bed screaming, there's a huntsman in the house. So anyway. Just had to divert that little uh, crisis there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our first safety car, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, this is the first yeah. safety car. Yeah. Actually, I've, um, this is one thing I noticed last night. The um, with my first safety car, there's not. Yeah, you know, we don't use the i racing safety car lights. So I was actually trying to wonder. I didn't hear it. And I was trying to wonder why everybody's slowing down and what's going on. Who am I? Oh, right, safety car. Okay. Back. Yeah, it's something that you've really got to listen to. I know, yeah. um, I know that the guys in Split One actually have got a hotkey program that they can actually uh, hit a key and it will bring up a message on everyone's screen that the safety car that they're launching the safety car. Um, yeah. But yeah, you do. You, it's one of those things where you just got to listen out for race control because when the safety car comes up, yep, everyone sort of slows down and and gets ready to bunch up behind the safety car. We decided to go with the live safety car to be able to give you guys the opportunity to dive into the pits as soon as the, as soon as the safety car gets called. Um, unlike with iRacing, you've got to do at least one lap behind the safety car before you go into the pits. Uh, this way, it opens up to strategic calls and, and makes it possible for you guys to dive in immediately if the safety car comes out. Well, to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty happy that you've uh, made that decision because uh, if you hadn't, uh, I wouldn't be sitting in P1 right now. So, uh, yeah, it, did definitely, uh, it, it definitely worked out quite well because uh, obviously with um, yeah, most of the leaders, they're jumping into the pits. And I, I just wonder if uh, uh, the car that was running around, uh, Mitch, uh, if, if that's what maybe caught him out and, and spent him a bit longer in the pits to um, yeah, cost him that, that, that lead that he had. I'd say that's probably that's probably it. Yeah. He's probably zigged when he should have zagged. An interesting fact here is uh, that the one little thing here that uh, benefited me as well, uh, being in the lead, was the car behind me was actually a lap down. Um, so yeah, had a had a little buffer between me and, and nice. P2. So I was like, oh, I could could make a little advantage of this as well. So yeah, it would uh, it worked worked. Everything was uh, going my way. Yep. And that's another thing that we do here is we don't uh, we don't wave around lap traffic, um, just like in the real thing. If there's a lap car behind, uh, in between first place and second place, uh, they stay there. That yeah, makes it interesting, doesn't it? You you've got to get around them. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. Over. Yep, hundred percent. So uh, so this is a this is the safety car. So he's uh, I think after this he's going to get called in. So I guess uh, about this stage, uh, Adam, what's going what's going through your mind? Are you thinking about how you're going to approach the restart? Yeah, it it, it definitely was uh, on my mind. So as, as I start to you know get towards the end of the the lap, I was starting to you know wonder, okay, where do you accelerate? How, how am I going to um, build a gap? Because obviously, you know, my you know full disclosure, my lap times certainly weren't. Uh, up there to be leading the race if, if it wasn't for the strategy you know i, I certainly wouldn't be in, in the position that i'm so it was a matter of how do i keep the guys behind me because at this stage there's still eight to ten laps to go um you know i, I knew i was going to have a battle on my hands i thought maybe if i can finish top five i'll be happy so how can i get a really good run out of that last corner and obviously noting the control line so it was just a matter of listening to um the uh 
race control. Uh, obviously, I know that you know from from past experience they were going to tell me when when I can go. So um, yeah, it was just a matter of you know, just sure, just quick weave, just get a bit of heat into the tyres, and just make sure you know, don't overcook it into turn one because that was also one of my my biggest concerns is just making sure that I break a little bit earlier, been under the safety car for a couple of laps, and um, you know didn't want to uh, didn't want to overdo it. Yeah, absolutely, and. Uh... And what about yourself, Craig? I think you were down there in 19th. You'd made up 14 spots from the start of the race, so that's a pretty good good effort. Um, yeah. But you're right kind of that. in amongst it there. So what were you sort of thinking? Well, yeah, I suppose it's just keeping that right pace in the in the pack, so you don't get too far behind or get too close. You get a bit of watch out for braking, but. The first safety car was a bit slow on the takeoff, and then when we did the second one, okay, we're gonna, we've got to just watch that guy in the front. As soon as you start seeing him pulling away, you just got to you see, floor it, keep up. Um, and like I say, hit that first corner with a bit of caution because you have been driving around the track for three, lap, three laps, you pulled down. Um, but definitely nerve wracking. <laughs> it's like you've, your nerves are up there, you're like you've got people around you. And it's, yeah, I agree. Uh, as they came around the corner, um, the race control, like, yep, you're good to go. So, yeah, foot went flat. Man. Yep. We'll see, yeah, because the same thing with the driver briefing. We uh, we give you a uh, a diagram of where your acceleration zone is, so at what point you can go. But, yeah, you've had a you've had a blinder of a start there. Um, Steve, I think it was Steve Vella that might have been behind you. I can't remember if it was Steve Vella or Jim Delios, but uh, he peeled off and went into the pit straight away, which left Craig Casper behind you. But... By the time you get to turn one, there you're almost two seconds on him. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great little uh, start that I had. Um, I was pretty happy to, to get that jump, and I think you know, obviously, um, race control said race control came over and said that I was free to go. So as soon as I heard that, those magical words, I, my, my foot went flat. You know, I think <laughs> a, few, a few people would have been like, oh, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna hold off, he's gonna bunch up, and then you know, try and get a gap and like that. Nah, as soon as, as soon as race control gave me the green light, I'm gone. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, just yeah, as I said, that made made sure that I just that this first lap out just hit my brake markers. You know, don't overcook it into a corner. Um, you know, I'd rather be cautious than, uh, than than try and push too hard and, and ruin my own race. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, you were off like a scalded cat then. So yeah, fantastic restart. Um, what about yourself, there, Craig? I think uh, I think you might have you, you might have dropped dropped the spot. On the restart, or did you make up the spot? I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember to be honest. I think it was a bit of a car, couple of card changes going on. Oh, oh yeah, you made definitely made up the yeah. spot there. Freebie. <laughs> yeah, you gotta I'll, love them. I'll gotta take love that. The freebies, man. Yeah, yep. that's good. Absolutely, take that any time you can get it. And the gentleman behind me, actually, I think for the rest of the race, he was good. Good paid. I think that was um. I'm in black too. Yep, a bit black, yep, yep. Black, yeah, he yeah, he um He gave me a bit of pressure all the way right to the end, to be honest. Good. And that was actually the very last lap scary one you like last lap, don't screw it up. And you got him tacking on your tail. That's no, just keeping it clean, you can like get those brake markers, get back into that groove again. Keep that, you know, keep the nerves down. Yeah, and you're always thinking, is he going to try something on the last corner? He's going to try and get close enough, you know. I know that's something I'll put that obviously, you know, you're, le you're learning every time you race to you know, at what point do you give in, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to ruin his race. Because sometimes you think someone's obviously faster than you. Um, so if he's... If he's oh, 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 that's... Uh, oh, that oh, looks like that. that's, that's Rick Summerhays there is... Uh, look. On, he's gone into the wall. Oh, his car looks like a crumpled beer can. Pretty sure there was another car on uh, pit, pit straight with a blown engine as well. Yep, that yeah, was uh, Jason De Potato. Yeah, he uh, he blew Good he that. he got tagged, hit the wall, and blew his engine. So so right about now they're about to call another safety car. Like you said, safety car breeds safety cars. I didn't even turn the safety car uh, icon off the uh, off the broadcast. That's how uh, how confident I was they were going to send another safety car. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that and I have seen the replay. So, but uh, well, yeah, it was at it was at this point where you know you, you 
hear the call come over the radio that there's a second safety car and at, at this point I was like you beauty this is my one stop strategy on fuel is now you know I'm now going to be able to get home so it's just yeah. a matter of and then it, it, you know, it's like how many laps does the safety car stay out for can, can it stay out for a few more laps can we finish under safety car so I don't have to race because uh, obviously having uh, I think I've got Tim behind me now you know I know he's super fast um, and obviously he's got Chris Barnes behind him as well so you know these are guys that I know are super fast and you know, when you see them on your relative screen it's, it's a matter of like oh, do I really want to be in front of these guys do I just <laughs> let them go yeah well the, you know that they're not going to muck about on the restart eh no, indeed, and it's obviously a bit of a contentious moment uh, uh, at this point. Obviously, um, one of the rules uh, with NTS this year is that obviously you maintain 90 90% uh, of your race speed, which obviously I've slowed down. And, and uh, uh, after the race, um, I was given a 30-second post-race penalty uh, because I was deemed to have slowed down too much uh, for for this period of the race, and um, I certainly thought I was doing 90% of my race speed. Um, you know, I judged it by my lap time. Um, and after going back over the, the footage today, I, I did a bit of a look and, and had a look at my lap times and did some calculations and, and worked out that you know I had had definitely stuck to that 90 that 90% lap time. So uh, put in a protest and. Uh, can reveal that uh, have uh, had the protest overturned, so uh, no post-race penalty for me. Yeah, it would have uh, would have sort of not not been well because uh, I'm I'm the guy that actually moves the cars around with the with the penalties. The uh, race control give me the penalty sheet, and then I just move cars around based on their penalties. You would have ended up by being I think in twelfth twelfth spot had that penalty oh, wow. been upheld. Um, yeah, it would, it would have hurt. It, it would have hurt. Obviously, you know, with the safety car, only with four laps to go, uh, I think, at this point. But when the safety car comes in, um, you know, a 30-second penalty uh, is uh, definitely would have hurt. But, you know, the rule's there. I mean, if, if if I was doing 60 at this point, I would have more than happily taken the, the penalty on the chin. But, uh, you know, still sitting on the, the 150, 100, you know, K an hour mark, you know, making sure I'm you know, not trying to bunch up the field or anything like that. But, uh, but yeah, and uh, as the safety car picks me up. Yep, absolutely. And not taking anything to learn. Yeah. So I was going to say, it's actually good something to learn, too. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't be able to figure out what speed to run at, to be honest, <laughs> at that point. But seeing this, he's like, okay, well, yeah, get that right, that 90% speed for the safety car, if I am over up front. But yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> as, I was, as I was saying to Adam, it's something that they'll, that they'll take a little bit of leniency with. If Adam was doing 80 kilometres an hour or 90 kilometres an hour and bunched up the field, it would have been a different story. Yeah. Um, and and look, you know, giving credit to, to race control, they look at the, these things in the heat of battle, and they've got a, a moment to uh, to make the decision. They do give um, an avenue for every driver to be able to um, to be able to question a protest if they if they feel that a, a penalty was given incorrectly, and um, they they take every um, you know every protest. Uh, they look at every single one of them carefully and make sure that whatever decision that they've made is the right decision and, and they're not afraid to, to overturn their decisions if they feel that this, the, the call they made at the time was wrong. No, and credit to, to Race Control. I mean, they had a very busy night last night. Um, you know, it, it's probably one thing that I'm going to have to learn for next week as well is make some adjustments to my radio because uh, at the moment I've got all drivers on. So uh, with all the drivers, I think after this safety car, talking over the radio, you know, calling for Race Control to review incidents, um, it made it incredibly hard to, to focus uh, while having, you know, uh, Tim and Chris behind me. Um, it, it was a nightmare. So you're going to have to make sure I turn those comms off before before next week. But yeah, race control certainly did a great job last night. They they had their work cut out for them, but I, I think they delivered minus minus one one decision. <laughs> that's right. I, I, I forgive them because it's over. So. <laughs> <laughs> So we're one more. I think we're one more lap under the safety car here, and then uh, and then they're going to let you go and race to the end. So that's going to be uh, what's that going to make it four laps worth of racing. So that's a, a, a well and truly a sprint to the end. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, at, at this point, I think I had six laps worth of fuel because I think I finished the race with two laps um, of fuel to go. So you know, the the strategy you know, only pitting once worked a, worked a dream. I, I couldn't have 
you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I wish I could sit here and say that, oh, you know, I, I planned to do it. Yeah, it was only one stop strategy. I knew there was going to be a safety. I didn't. I, I, I got lucky. Um, I'm very happy to take, uh, take the the position at the moment because yeah, it was it was just a matter of going. Do I stay? Do I go in or do I stay out? And I thought, ah, I'll stay out. See how I go. Yeah, uh, and it worked out. No, absolutely fantastic. And of course, with our, <clears throat> with our rule, our cool down rule. You still have to be able to make a, a full cooldown lap after uh, after the checkered flag to be able to be counted as a uh, well. You'll still get counted as a race finisher, but if you don't complete a cooldown lap, you uh, you get a, a three uh, three spot penalty. Yes. Yeah. Well, definitely. But if, if we didn't have the second race car, the second safety car, this would have definitely uh, had struggled. That's for sure. And we have had instances uh, last season where where guys have not gotten their fuel numbers right and they haven't been able to complete their um, their cool down lap. We had an instance incident. I think it was in actually in the first season where the race winner forgot about the cool down lap. He did a burnout and then he uh, he quit to the pits and unfortunately he um, he was given a uh, at the time he was given a one place. Uh, finishing penalty. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those things you have to keep in mind because, you know, especially in, in when you're in split two, you know, the the top three, as you mentioned before, get a get a wild card entry into the top split for for next week. So even if you do have a poor qualifying, you, you know that you're at least going to start somewhere um, towards the back of the field of the uh, of split one. So, it, you know, if you're in first, second, or third, and and you you make that error and you don't finish the race that that can take you from you know finishing on the podium in split two and having a, a week in split one or being stuck in split two for for two weeks in a row yeah exactly and and that's and that's the thing we've changed things this this season um to make it a three place grid penalty so if you are in first and you don't make that uh, that cool down you'll end up by being in in fourth place so um, you know, you, you lose an opportunity to go into into the wild card for split one. Um, and while we're talking about that, just so you guys know, um, you have two options for split one. Once you wild card, you can either you can either qualify, and if you qualify high enough to get yourself further up the grid in split one, so be it. Or you can just start from the back of the grid in split one, but you do have to do a timed lap. Um, otherwise. I'll, I'll forget to actually include you into the split and you'll be watching the race from the sideline. That's oh, good to know. It's, it's always a matter of, you know, you always got to make sure you put in those quality laps because, you know, sometimes, you know, even, even uh, you know, to make split two last night was a little bit frustrating because uh, I think, you know, I started P14 in, in split two, but uh, when looking at the timing sheets, if I was able to nail one of my optimum laps or I would have been well and truly you know in, in the top split so um, you know it just shows how important it is to get all of the lap right you know it's all good to get a sector good here and a sector good there but if you can't string it all together then you know it's, it's unfortunate that you're uh you end up towards the back of the field and, and in this case in, in split two yep absolutely I think we're coming up to the restart now so we're uh, we're going to see the safety car peel off uh, I think it's uh, after after this corner or the next corner. Yeah, it was around this around this point. I think that uh, the race control was still talking to a couple of drivers, but uh, yeah, the safety car peels off. And again, yeah, much like the last restart, I'm I'm looking in my mirror, seeing Tim and Chris, and I'm like, uh, how how am I going to get away from these guys? You knowing, especially with with Road America, you know, that's such long that that front straight is so long it's easy to get a bit of a slipstream so there we go looks like we're about to go green again and timmy's right oh, on right the tail there right over the tail and, and you got it just perfectly too because just as he's br he's put the uh put his foot on the brake to slow himself up he's taken off yeah, it was a nice little, uh, nice little jump. I was pretty happy with, uh, with that getaway. I didn't get as much as what I'd hoped um, away from him, but yeah, it was it was just enough. So now we've got a uh, now it's basically a four lap sprint to the end, and these guys are are going to be all over you like white on rice. 
yeah, again, it was just a matter of you know, hit the braking markers. You know, don't don't uh, don't break too early, don't break too late. Just find your spot. And by this stage, you know, I was quite lucky. I, I had you know relatively no fuel in the car. You know, cold tyres because I'd been behind the safety car. You know, something must have happened to these guys for um, either that or Clay managed to, to find himself a brilliant turn of speed. I think yeah, I think second to last lap, there's a, uh, actually might, it might even be the last lap. There was a bit of an incident between uh, I think Tim and myself and a couple of others, so we we won't spoil too much. But yeah, there was a, a little bit of contact. Um, I think on the yeah it was on the last lap. Yeah, not I mean not taking anything away from Clay's ability, he's a good little steerer. Um, but to make it to third place with that many cars ahead of you and and that kind of quality, uh, those kind of quality drivers, is a big ask. But he's, he's all over the back of Mitch here, looking to make a uh, to make a move if he can. Yeah, Clay's racing last night was fantastic. You know, he was super fast, super clean. Um, you know, I, I spent the better half of you know, the first 10 laps behind him and um, he just you know, kept pulling away from me lap after lap. So yeah, he, he was on the money last night. Yeah, he seems to be one of those drivers that does have the patience to be able to sit behind the car and, and kind of judge when the opportunity is there. And, and yeah, he doesn't mess around when he, get, when he does get a sniff, he goes for it. This is the dreaded straight. In my head, I'm like, all right, there's one down. <laughs> Three to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring it on. Come on home. It's all about um, controlling these cars, you know, be easy with the throttle because they don't like being right on the gas straight away, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's one of the hardest things, you know, especially, you know, when you've got, you know, your tyres are a bit worn, the car's light. It's very easy to get on the, the gas a little bit too early and just spin that, that rear wheel and, and, yeah, just, you know, lose a couple of tenths. And, you know, at the moment, you just have to look at the distance between Tim and I. And, you know, I think at that point he was five tenths behind me. So, you know, if, if I lose two tenths coming out of that, that corner into that main straight or even out of the last corner, um, you know, that, that can be the difference between, you know, first and second. Yeah. But I did I did have to admit, I was looking in my mirror while I was racing, and you know, as I saw Chris getting closer to Tim, I'm like, yes, yes, keep him busy, keep him busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, right at this point, don't forget, Craig, you've made up 17 spots here. Um, that's not bad at all. you got Luke Holland all over the back of you, and... Uh, putting on maximum pressure. Yeah. This corner, eh? It's crazy. It's a touchy corner. It you is. Be, uh, trying got, to get that full throttle here, trying to get it out. It's clean. You honestly got to play with the throttle through that corner. Yeah. If you oh. muck it up, you're just gone. Especially with this corner as well. well you got a good gap yeah. on him. You had a good run out of there. Yeah. And you know you're getting close too, so hey, come on lap, come on, let's keep it together. Yeah. Keeping that, oh. keeping that oh, mind. Oh, free spot, is it? Freeze Yeah, you gotta love them. Yeah, you see that car coming back, I bet you uh, I bet you took a big deep breath then. <laughs> Especially with two laps to go. It was, a, it was a, I actually really enjoyed the track. It was a good, when you really got the feel for it and really get, got into it, it's, Good speed, holding those corners. It yeah. is a great track. It, it has kind of you know, the long straights. It's got the twisty bits. It, it yeah. is a, a, a great, it's a good fun track to race at. Yeah, it's definitely one of those tracks that lends itself to the V8s really nicely. So is this lap 27 now? Uh, I... 20, 26, I think. Yeah, 26. 26, okay. Next still lap is 27, yeah. Yeah, still two laps to go, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it was at this point of the race, obviously, there, there you know, a few incidents behind the, at, towards the back of the field, 
um, drivers were, were calling out to race control and asking for you know, reviews and, and race control were coming back saying yeah, we'll look at it after the race you know anything from here on will be a, a post-race penalty so but obviously with all that chatter going on in in your ear it, it makes it really hard to make sure that you're hitting your braking markers because it's, it's, it is quite distracting so um, yeah I, I, it makes me marvel at, at Peter Brock you go back and watch some of his old videos where he's you know talking around Bathurst like just talking to the commentators with his arm on the window oh. sill. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to focus on a sim and uh, can't even imagine how, how he could do that in real life. It was, it's just oh, mind blowing. Absolutely. And yeah, it's a good point because I'm like definitely next week I'll be turning that driver turning the uh, comms off because it is distracting. Like you really you're in a zone and you got someone chirping in your ear. Yeah, all you want to hear is race control. I mean, all you want is to make sure that race control can hear you and, and you can hear race yeah. control. So That's yeah. It, a handy tip for any of those drivers out there that found the same thing last That's night. Right. Is you, you can in your iRacing settings um, turn off turn off the comps. So yeah, you're only here um, race control. And that was that was necessary chat. Can you imagine what it would have been like um, had people been able to say you know talk openly um, on the, across the comms? Yeah, could only imagine. Yeah, I remember season one of that JP. It was um, a bit a bit full on back then, but now it's um, quietened down. Now it's re really um, good to race with. Look, okay, he's on your tail. He's yeah, all over you now. He's yeah, all over you. Last lap, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he got a better run out of there. And he's having a sniff. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh pressure's on. Oh, oh! oh! a little bit of rubber paddles. Oh, look, he lost it. Oh, that's. Oh, oh, oh there, no, we there, goes. there we go. There we go. Oh no. See, there you go. It doesn't take much, does it? It's that one little hit in there and it just catches you later. Oh. oh no, he's hit the grass oh. now. Oh, and he's hit him. <laughs> okay, I can. Uh, now I get it. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? And it was just a, it, that whole incident started um, just before that, uh, that corner. I think it was that turn five. Yeah, I think it was. But yeah, it was. I, I I saw that happening in my mirror, and I was like, you know, I felt the contact, and the steering went a bit sideways, and like just, you know, just slowly on the accelerator, just power out of it. Um, but yeah, it was uh, very nerve-wracking. Not gonna lie. But yeah, well, I saw everything unfold in the mirror, and I'm like, obviously watched the relative, and saw I had a bit of space. I'm like, all right, just take it nice and slow from here. You know, you don't need to push yourself. No, last lap. That's the last thing you wanna do. Like, uh. Especially when you race it for 28 laps, you don't want to wreck it. No. Yeah, the first thing was going through my head was, you know, obviously, you know, did, did I, was that my fault? Did I turn into Tim or, you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, you, you never want to ruin a, another driver's race. So, you know, obviously watched the replay back and thought that, you know, there's no, really no one at fault. So, yeah, to cross the line and take the win. Um, which was well, at the stage I thought I had the win and then you know, obviously had the had the, the penalty but that obviously the protest took that so yeah I was happy to uh, cross the line and, and take my, my first victory in, in a V8 supercar and, and in the uh, NTS series so yeah pretty pretty happy absolutely nice work, well done mate nice work yeah congratulations on that mate it was a good race it was a, it was a really good race yeah, enjoyed it so one thing after all, all the years of sim racing I've, I've done it you know, I can judge if a race is good by the level of sweatiness I have at the end of it uh, uh, yeah <laughs> if you're sweating you know you've had a good race yeah so that wasn't bad so Adam you made up eight spots there to finish in first um, what about you what about yourself there Craig you made up 19 places to finish in 14 so yeah, 19 places happy. mate I think that gives you no, Jonathan Ben pipped you for hard charger for uh, for split two. He made up 25 spots, but that's not bad at all. Oh, hang on a second. Victories. We've got the uh, we've got the the victory burnout. Oh no! Yeah, no some, someone was whinging about that last night. About the burnout, you can't whinge about the burnout. Come on. No, wouldn't they? Someone say you should have done a lap first, cool down lap first before the burnout. Yeah, someone was just obviously making sure that, you know, we uh, we get to the, um, obviously I've got to do my cool down lap, 
so they were just checking to see if I can do my cooldown lap or, or if I can um, uh, you know, do my burnout. But well, uh, I, knew I, had a, I knew I had enough fuel to be able to do both, so I, I appreciated the concern, but yeah, I uh, certainly uh, certainly made yeah. sure I had enough fuel. <laughs> and that and that's probably one of the one of the best places to stop and do your burnout there. There's plenty of room to be able to do that. Yeah, that that's ultimately the reason why I stopped there. I thought, you know, I'm off the track. I'm I'm not going to get in anyone's way. And, and to be honest, I was a little bit eager to do some burnouts because yeah. it's said, yeah, it's the first time you've won a race. It's uh, you know one of those things that you want to uh, want to celebrate. Absolutely, and we only allow the winner to to do a burnout. I mean, it's fitting that that. Uh, you won the race, you can do the burnout. And we also will allow you, if you've got enough fuel um, and you don't want to get in or don't want to get in anyone's way, we allow you to do another lap to do a burnout if you want. Um, and then you don't have to complete that lap, you can then escape. Ah, beautiful. Because you've done, you've done, effectively, you've done your cool down lap. Um, and then, uh, then you can find a spot to do your burnout. But no, well done, mate. Well done, guys. Yeah, good race. So I guess... Yeah. Uh, Yep, go on. I was just going to say, yeah, no, it was, it was a great race and, and well done to everyone. You know, you said it was one of, for the first race of the season, it was certainly uh, pretty intense, but it was uh, it was good. And it was really nice to, to get the uh, get the win, so. Yeah, well done. Um, so I guess uh, first race first race of the season, uh, season three for you guys, round one of the uh, Nationwide Tracking Systems V8 Evolution Championship. You raced the, uh, it was the NTS Road America 180, 180 kilometres, uh, 28 laps last night. Uh, I guess, how would you rate the experience, the racing, the experience out of 10? Oh, for me, oh. It's, it's definitely up there. It's a 10. It's a 10. It was a great night last night. It was it was hard. It came on my toes. Left me sweaty. Uh, yeah, 100%. It was a great race. What about yeah, yourself, Blake? Sorry, oh, sorry, like, Craig? No, no, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I definitely had a 10, mate. Getting up 19 spots and... Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it for the first race of the season, and how clean it was, and it was, yeah, and the, just the way it's structured, it was. Yeah, I walked out, so I was smiling all day. <laughs> Fantastic. What about yourself, Blake? I mean, you raced in split one last night. What were what was your uh, your impression of it? I'll give it ten out of ten. Um, it was really good. I actually finished uh, seven spots. Um, I actually got a black flag last night um, under safety um, caution. Um, bit of a bad luck um a guy was just in the middle of the track and i was um in the middle of not looking at the time and um i hit him i actually braked as well and i went right up him but that was all on me as well um so i went and took that black flag but other than that i'll also rate it out of 10 out of 10 it's a really good series and i would rate it for anyone that joined the series Brilliant. Well, uh, well, that was round uh, round one for split two from uh, Road America of the Nationwide Tracking Systems V8 Evolution Series. Um, going on with the, uh, the the week, let's have a look at the calendar here. So. Uh